Boom. So we are back. It is Monday. It's nine o'clock. It's the 31st of January 2022. How fast has the first month of January gone? It's always a slightly sobering thought to go, oh God, like there's one month down. Christmas doesn't seem five minutes ago, does it? New Year doesn't seem five minutes ago. Um, And already that's one month of the year gone. So in terms of your career, acting wise, that's how fast the next month's going to go and the next month and the next month. And this community, Act On This, is all about acting on information that you get from uh, from streams like this, but also our weekly mastermind sessions that we hold for members of ActsOnThis.tv with the biggest names in the game. So um, I'm all about action taking. So let me know whilst we are live tonight, if you are joining in live, what action you have already taken maybe this week. I know it's only Monday night. Um but you know, you've had a full you've had a full day, guys. What you've been doing? Let me know what action you've taken to get further um, in your career this week. We've got loads to share with you guys tonight. Thanks so much for everybody who's uh, who's here live. I'm seeing more people join us live. David, how you doing, mate? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I've got lots to share with you. Uh, lots of behind the scenes stuff about on this TV. Some incredible stuff that's coming up later on this week, um, and then we're going to do some Q and A at the end of this as well. As well, we'll probably get like 15 minutes of just anything, anything random. If you want to ask anything about your career, getting auditions, self tapes, jobs castings i don't know anything marketing social media side hustles getting out of your day job anything that's all we can just talk about that to uh, towards the end of this session so first of all i'm going to do a little recap as we always do on these i'm going to go over to actonthis.tv if you are here for the first time and you don't know what this site is basically go to actonthis.tv watch the video on the home page it'll tell you absolutely everything you need to know about this community but once a week on a tuesday or a thursday if you're a member of this community we sit down with one of the biggest casting directors agents actors writers producers or directors in tv um, if you like working in TV, want to act in TV, you want to make money out of your acting career as opposed to it just being and remaining a hobby and a frustrating one at that for the rest of your life, come and get involved in this community and we'll teach you how to land your next TV role or your first TV role fast. So if you want more editions, more roles on TV, come and get involved. Last week, our special uh, guest, I'm going to go into the preview section here was an absolute legend, a really, really good friend of ActsOnThis.tv, one of the most supportive casting directors in the industry, Mr. Peter Hunt, who is head of Hollyoaks Casting. He's actually head of Lime Pictures Casting, who make Hollyoaks, um, and they also do a lot of other shows, not just Hollyoaks. So Peter will be casting for all the Netflix shows that um, Lime make. Um, they've, you know, they've had some really successful uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime shows over the years, stuff like Zero Chill, Free Rain. I think Free Rain was an Emmy, Emmy-winning show. Um, uh, there are hints that more new original drama will be coming out of Line Pictures this year. Um, so Peter's just a really incredible guy to know. Um, obviously, his main job day in, day out is casting Hollyoaks. He's already, um, as we were filming this last week, he'd already auditioned 10 actors that day for a new regular that was coming into the show. Um, I think he said, he, on average, he casts about 21 regulars uh like a year in that show uh, maybe even more i think that was just since the new exec producers come in um but he's giving people their first tv jobs all the time obviously you know he does all the day player roles um him and jill uh, and hattie who work in the casting department at hollyoaks if you don't know the names of these people you need to know them um if you get involved in this community you will learn them very fast because you'll get to join sessions like this every single week and um, so i'm going to play you a little trailer of this of what you missed but for those people who are already members of the community if you pop into your members area i might have to just log in here actually because i don't think i'm logged in if i just log into my own account uh, if you log into your premium membership, you will find in your premium membership, if you click in the uh, purple product there, at the top there, our latest five features, you will find the full nearly two-hour feature um, with Peter Hunt. In there now, you've got the video, you've got the audio, so listen to it, watch it, whatever you find more convenient in your own time, but get it done this week. It was an absolutely cracking session. If you're here tonight live as well, um, let us know if you were uh, if you were on that session and what your biggest takeaway was. In the meantime, here is two minutes and 20 seconds of what you missed. I will introduce you to our special guest. He's an absolute legend in the acting industry. This guy makes actors' dreams come true on a weekly basis. It's head of Hollyoaks Casting, Mr. Peter Hunt. Peter, how are you? Casting in a 2022-2023 world. You think moving forward then there's going to be a hybrid of tapes. Tapes are here to stay, but hopefully you, you, you might give an option for in the room stuff. If I thought I performed better in the room, having met someone, engaged the vibe or could ask questions, then if I had that option, that's cool. If my circumstances, I thought I preferred perform better on self-tape, then there's that too. So I don't know. I think maybe the way, certainly for us and for me, 
is to find a way of marrying the two up that gives actors the choice of both. I wish it was me, but it isn't. I need to tell you the truth about Lisa. I can't keep lying. For those people who uh, who are like wanting to reach out, get on that radar. What what advice would you have? But I do read everything. I think I have a reason to write. And that might be that we've not met or I've not seen you for some time. You've added something to your show reel. Have something to say other than I'm an actor, give us a job. If you wanted to land a role fast, right? You've been an actor. What are the first three things you're going to do? See if you don't feel like you fit in to a normal day player role. Like, how do you go about, like, wording that to you as, like, a day player? If you're in a screen test, do you get a chance to rehearse with the actor or is the... Screen test like the first time you'll do the scene. Yeah, I, I like to think we found a way that's much kinder uh, to actors and getting an opportunity to do it first. What accent, which regional accent do you think is going to have the most type of work coming up and what should I devote my time to? When you're casting older characters, do you tend to look for named people? I like to find people that haven't done stuff. Uh -huh. um, because I think that's more interesting, bringing new people to the table. Concentrate on being good, because if you're good, you'll get found. Actsonthis.tv, if you want to get uh, access to the full nearly two-hour session there with Peter, get an Acts on this TV membership. You'll get access to that session, so many sessions in the members area, and you will get access to live sessions like that where you'll be the person on camera asking those questions of our guests every single week. So you can see with Peter, it's a wicked session, lots and just to-the-point kind of questions. I'm going to play a clip out in a minute where I'm like, look, Peter, you know, you've been an actor. You was an actor back in the day. Like, what, what things would you do right now if you were looking for your next TV job? You know, like, what are you going to do? Uh, so I'm going to play that little clip out for you there. But these sessions are really cool, guys. Let us know, like I say, if you were on that session, uh, what you took away from it. I know there's already this year... God, I must have seen nearly 10 people in the Acts on This community land their first job this year, which is wicked. Josh being one of them who is on this uh, on this session here tonight. Um, and that's because what we talk about, this, this, this stuff works, basically. Act on it. Don't hang around and just sort of, you know, do nothing. Um, it does absolutely uh, it does absolutely work. I'm just going to dive into the question before I play that next clip out because I'm seeing quite a lot of uh, a lot of comments here. Laura's in the house. Has not been here ages. Um, been a difficult few months. Well, I hope it's getting better for you, Laura. Um, come and get back involved. We'll G you up if you you know need a bit of support, you need a kick at the bum and a bit of motivation. Uh, we can do that for you. Lindsay, good evening as well. Marriott's got a question about self-tape. Uh, casting put me forward to production, waiting for production to confirm. This was three weeks ago. Is it a case of waiting? Um, three weeks is quite a long time, Marek. I'd chase them up and say, am I getting the tape or not? Um, if you've been put... Casting put me forward to the production, waiting for production to confirm. Confirm you get the tape or you've done the tape and you've put it in. Let us know in the chat. We'll uh, we'll figure that out for you, mate. Natalie's booked a voice reel session. That's what she's been doing. Um, Shivers attended a Zoom meeting with his agent, which is good. Um, and Sarah is filming a short film on Sunday. So excited. It's all going down. It's all happening in the, uh, in the chat today. Um, so, yeah, this chat with Peter, we were looking at... I mean, God, we talked about all sorts of stuff. Like I say, it's nearly a two-hour session. Tonight, I can play you out probably, I don't know, six, seven minutes of, uh, of what you've missed there. Um, which is why you want to come and get involved with the community to get access to it all. Um, but Peter has been on both sides of the camera, literally when he started out. He's done so many things, actually. If you don't know Peter Hunt, um, you know, he's been an actor himself. He's worked in production. Um, he set up an acting school back in the day as well. It's still an incredible acting school today. It's run by a guy called David Crowley, um, who is now a director of Hollyoaks, actually. But that, that acting school is called Act Up North. Definitely check it out. They've got a few different schools in different parts of the country. Um, and now, obviously, Peter is in casting. So... He's just got such an eclectic kind of uh, you know view of the industry, a real rounded view of the industry. So he really champions new talent. And you heard him say at the end there when um, we had a, an actor asking about you know like finding older actors. Um, there's a there's a thing amongst older actors where they feel that you know if they're new to the industry and they've come to it a little bit later in life that you know the other actors who have got loads and loads and loads of experience are going to be the ones who get the work and not them. And Peter's not like that at all. He's like, look, I want to find different people. I don't want to keep putting the same people. Um, you know, in uh, in in the same kind of roles, in the same kind of shows. Um, so if you are new, and you know, with, regardless of the age you are, please like uh, if there's if there's one person you want to reach out to, like who is supportive. There's a lot actually in the community in the industry. Um, 
But Peter's particularly supportive of brand new talent, you know, who is who doesn't have like traditional drama school training and um, you know, lots of credits under their belt. Um, so this is a question I asked Peter. I was like, look, how would you get your first TV role fast? Um, and here's a little bit of his answer. Obviously, I can't put it all into one of these clips. The full answer and everything he talks about is within the main, uh, you know, within the main session. But this might just give you a couple of ideas. If you wanted to land a role fast, right? You've been an actor. What are the first three things you're going to do? Maybe putting yourself in our position of when would you want to read things? I think I'd always joked about Friday afternoon was good because that's when I'm checking out of my day or something like that. And often people ask me questions like, oh, I'm thinking of getting rid of that scene on my showreel. I think it doesn't really add anything. Well, if you're saying that, then you know it doesn't. So take it off. Yeah. I don't think you need us to tell you the basics of what works and what doesn't. And if you're questioning something, uh, then you probably already know the answer. Do your research, I think, as well, um, on where you might, you know, see people, networking events at 532 and, you know, get yourself out and about and find out where people are and what events people are likely to be going to. Have a finger on the pulse and, you know, see what's out there on telly as well. You have to watch that level of kind of television if you want to be in it. It's like when people said they want to work on stage and I'm like, but what was the, what did you last see at the theatre? And it's, well, I've not been to the theatre for quite a while. Well, how can you want a job in theatre if you don't go to the theatre? You need to know what it is that you're going into and what you're writing to. What do you bring to a role that the person before you and the person after you doesn't? You've got to find that out and pull out what those differences are and look at it from a business perspective of how you market those differences. My other last tip would be, don't presume it's me that does all the work. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to say it was, but it's not. You know, Jill, who works with me, does a tremendous amount. Our associate, Hattie, uh, you know, bless her, she does a hell of a amount and gets, you know, the jobs of sorting things out for us. So it's working out those associates because I think it's often as good to know who the associates are as the casting directors yeah, because definitely. the associates do a lot of the a lot of the graft and hard work on our behalf so if you can win them over as well again they're on their way up because they want to be casting directors and they appreciate your journey as actors also wanting to make those leaps and jumps Once again, at onlist.tv to get access to the full session. Um, but yeah, there's some pretty quality advice there from Peter, which is just really about knowing your, knowing the difference, what did they say? The difference between knowing your shit and knowing you are shit. You've got to know your shit in this industry. Research everything. You should be watching the shows you want to be a part of. You should know exactly who's in the casting department, not just the casting directors, but the assistants, the associates um, as well. You should know where you fit into that show. Your showreel should be aligned with where you fit into that show. Same with your headshots. So you need to be marking yourself and putting yourself in front of these people in a way that, you know, basically uh, presents you as a solution to their, you know, to their casting problem. So many people it's funny when I talk to actors, they'd be so happy for a role in Hollyoaks. Like, oh, yeah, I'll take a role in Hollyoaks. Um, you know, even a little role, right? You're going to be getting getting paid, I don't know, two lines on Hollyoaks as a hospital porter. I don't know, 800 quid. It's a decent, you know, it's a decent day's work. Um, and yet, you know, actors will be more than happy to take that money and take the role. But when you go, would you watch Hollyoaks? No. I'm not saying you have to watch it every single night, but like it is part of your job, like you said there. You know, to be watching the stuff that you actually want to be in. If you were going to go for a job interview at any other company in the world that was nothing to do with the acting industry, you would research the products that that company sells. You might buy one. You might test it out. You're going to know how to talk about that when you go in the interview. So many people will go to an audition for Coronation Street and like haven't even watched the show. They've no idea who the characters are that are going to be in their scene or anything like that. You've got to do your research, basically. Um, and uh, and and no, yeah, you know the people in the casting departments that aren't just the casting directors as well. That's why, like in a session a couple of weeks ago, Kelly Valentine Hendry, the casting director for um, Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time, Bridgerton, we brought her whole team on. That's still in the members area for you guys. If you've not seen that, get in the members area and watch or listen to that this week. You know, we had our entire team, um, three associates and her casting assistant in you know from their office on that session agent Archie Purnell is in the house I just noticed your comment there mate he says hey Ross and gang um, Archie's the uh, one of the co-founders of Bodhi Talent probably Archie probably one of the most popular agencies on the planet right now the amount of emails and DMs and Facebook messages and tweets I'm getting from people asking about how to approach you for rep after the session that we did is insane um, if you want to know about Archie 
um, Ricky, you know, the guys who run uh, who run, run Bodhi Talent, um, including uh, their dogs as well, because they're a very important part um of the uh of the setup uh get yourself over to on this in the members area as well you will find that session another incredibly popular session and archie i keep seeing you putting tweets out um and i know people obviously who are rep by you who are getting some incredible opportunities at the moment so fair play mate keep uh keep up the good work so the first two clips that i wanted to play out i've got two more clips i wanted to play out from the session with peter hunt one is a cheeky way this is like a little hack that I'm like, I don't even, I wasn't even sure if I should share it with people because this is this has helped me land auditions and roles in serial drama quite a few times in the past. And again, it comes back to knowing your research and knowing what's going on in the worlds that these serial dramas are set in. And there's one little way you can do that by keeping your ear to the ground, not just watching the shows, um, but by also using some online resources to kind of figure out what might be coming up in these shows and then how you can put material that you know that cast director will be looking for in front of them at a time when you know they are going to be ready to buy it. Um, I'll play this little clip out now and hopefully you'll get it. You'll understand what I mean. And then I'm going to show you a site where you can keep your ear to the ground on this kind of stuff. And then I'll jump back into the comments. But here's a little hack around the big disasters and stunt weeks in serial drama. When actors are looking for their, their first roles or they're looking for you know their next role or whatever and they're looking to reach out to casting departments like yours at, at Hollyoaks and other serial dramas and stuff, keeping your ear to the ground like on Digital Spy and, and shows like and, and websites like that about these shows, you can often find out like what's sort of planned for later on in the year. So you know whenever there's something like this that generally you know you guys are probably going to need the smaller roles of the doctors, the nurses. We've mentioned this before, like police, etc., firemen. I don't know whatever you might need around an explosive you know storyline or a tragedy. Um, so you can kind of um, get a bit of a heads up if you're looking for the day player roles of what's coming up, and then reach out to you with a more solution focused email of going, look, I know you've got this coming up. You might be in need of these kind of roles. Here's my reel where I play those roles or here's a tape where I'm playing those roles. October is always notoriously stunts for all soaps. Yeah. Emmerdale and Corrie call it Super Soap Week um, and it's just stunt week for us, but it's always notoriously been October. The one thing I'm surprised people don't pick up on is Soap Awards is always in June. You yeah. always want a massive explosive week uh, the week before Soap Awards opens for votes. Yeah, definitely. And you guys are shooting what? Is it like six weeks out or is it longer than that? Yeah, yeah. It's about six weeks. Yeah. So you'll be casting those smaller roles of Bob, like you mentioned before or whatever, uh, roughly six weeks before the TX date, the transmission date. So how would you recommend actors utilize that information then? Is it savvy to be marketing around that time for stuff that you might be looking for? I think so, because as you said, it's a knowledge of what's coming up. There's always paramedics, yeah. doctors, social workers, uh, and those kind of roles, just because they have to come in, uh, you know, as kind of story functions for what we've got going on. Um, so there are always those characters anyway, but as you said, they go up in scale in terms of paramedic, fire people, coffers when there's a stunt. Act on this.tv forward slash live to check out the full schedule of upcoming calls like that and also to get your membership if you want to get access to the recording um, of that full session with Peter. So yeah, Ultimately, when it comes back to doing your research, um, you might have heard me mention there a site called Digital Spy. And if you want to get roles in serial drama, particularly when you're first starting off, like this is what I did anyway, and it just works, right? I've, I've told loads of people to do this and it just works. Um, use this site ultimately to find out what's coming up and where big stunts are planned and they'll be planned months out. So you know the casting has not taken place yet. Um, you know, if you are looking for those roles of the doctor, the paramedic, the firefighter, the nurse... Um, that are abundant when there's a huge tragedy and everybody's dying and stuff. I mean, four people died in the Hollyoaks on the stunt week that they did two weeks ago. Um, massive, massive explosion. They need all kind of characters like that who just have a few lines to just carry the story along. 
Um, if you have cell tapes of you playing those characters or you've maybe got a decent scene shot or maybe you played those characters before, it's well worth putting your stuff in front of these casting directors because they're going to, you know, you're putting on a plate for them basically. They're going to be really appreciative that actually you're giving them what they want at a time when they need it. So Digital Spy is this website here. And basically it's just digitalspy.com. Um, you'll find all sorts of stuff, stuff on here, TV, movies, soaps, tech, you know, just all, all that kind of stuff. But if you click into the soap section, which is what I've got here, you don't always find super, super relevant material because some stuff is just gossip stuff. It might be about the actors in the shows um, and it might be about, about storylines that are just about to play out. So these have already been filmed six, eight weeks ago. But you will find... Um, occasionally, if you check this on a weekly basis, you will get clues. I was on here last week, and I know you know they were already talking about Emmerdale's massive stunt that's coming up in October. I think they're going to do a live episode as well. I mean, that would be a really cool thing to be a part of, a live episode with a massive stunt, You know, regardless of how large the role is that you're playing. To be a part of that would be amazing. But you can see here all these headlines. Um, a lot of them will be about storylines, like I say, that are happening right now, but you will find some stuff here. Um, from time to time that's you know brand new stuff where you're um, you know you're reading about stuff that is more than six to eight weeks out within these shows um, and you can get showreel material self-tape material aligned with what's coming up seven huge casualty spoilers for next week <laughs> so for those people who uh, you know are so avid uh, avid soap watchers as well you find a lot of uh, gossip here what's this EastEnders film makes a big decision in 43 picks I mean stuff like that is just for a bit of fun obviously but Keep an eye on digitalspy.com. Uh, you know, Emmerdale start on the other dingle she auditioned for. I mean, that, might be, that might be quite interesting. So Lucy Pardo reveals the other dingle she nearly played. And that's the thing, you know. I also know Isabel Steele, who's in uh, plays Liv in Emmerdale. She initially auditioned for the role of Gabby and didn't get it, by the way, folks. I know I know um, Isabel and her dad really well. Her dad cuts my hair, um, crazily enough. Um, and... They didn't give her that role, and they kept her in mind, and Liv came up. And as far as I know, they didn't even have anyone else audition for it. They just took her straight to screen test, um, and she nailed it and uh, and got the role. I'm going to look at a little clip of Peter Hunt explaining about screen tests on Soap in a minute as well. That'll be the last one that I, uh, that I play today. But yeah, if you're not using Digital Spy already... DigitalSpy.com. Get on it. Sharon, how are you doing? Says, late tonight. Got distracted. Got, got, got distracted by a live ghost tour from York. Amazing. I have been on a live ghost tour from York, uh, Sharon, accidentally as I was going to a bar in York um, and took part in the ghost walk for, I don't know, a good half a mile from the hotel to a place called the Evil Eye Lounge. I'd recommend it in York. Get very, very drunk there. Um, Sarah says, you guys should treat yourself a bit too. Oh, Archie. Yeah. Archie says, thanks. 18 hour days pay off mate i'm with you i know it but also 18 hour days that i was doing last year also nearly drive you to a breakdown <laughs> mate i was so exhausted this just goes for everybody this year in 2022 please look after yourself when it comes to sleep one thing i deprived myself of so much last year because i thought i was a robot and i was a machine was sleep i was going to bed at half one two o'clock in the morning working on that's on this try to get everything else in my life done getting up for the gym at like seven o'clock and wondering why like my health was suffering. I'm like, working out. Yeah, but you're getting five hours of sleep a night. Your hormones are all over the place. Um, you know, you're not getting enough deep sleep to create the stuff your body needs to regulate everything in your body. Um, so uh, sleep is a big like fo focus of mine in 2022. I'm getting really good at it. I've changed my workouts as well. I don't even work out in the morning at the moment. I work out in the evening. Um, I'm trying that out because it will even help me sleep. So I normally work out now at like 9, uh, 9 p.m. at night. Um, to get even more tired, to sleep better. And I bought something called an Aura Ring, O-U-R-A. And you wear it at night. You can wear it through the day if you want. I just wear it at night. And it will monitor everything about your sleep, your temperature, your heart rate, how much deep sleep you get, how much rapid eye movement sleep you get, your restfulness, everything. And then gives you a readiness score the next day that'll be like, look, you had good sleep last night. You know, 82 out of 100, you're ready to go for the day. If you're getting a 60 out of 100, it's like, listen, look after yourself today because you're going to be pretty, pretty screwed. Um, it's cool, a cool piece of kit. So uh, Archie, eighteen hour days you can only do for a certain amount of time, mate. And then you definitely need to uh, to look after yourself. Definitely. Um, right, I've got one more clip to play from this sesh with Mr. Peter Hunt, um, and then I'm going to show you what's coming up this Thursday because I think it's going to be one of the most impactful sessions we've ever done at artsonlist.tv and you guys who are going to be tuning in and watching I think are going to resonate with the guests that we have on this week probably more than you would do with a lot of the other guests that we have on who are much further ahead of their careers um because what we've got coming up on Thursday night is pretty special but before that um I'm just going to play one more um 
One more little clip from Peter Hunt on screen tests. And this might, you know, feel a little way out for some people. Like, oh, you know what? I'm just looking for my first audition yet and this sort of stuff. But it's good to know when you get down to a screen test, when it's maybe you against two or three other people for a regular role in a soap. Um, here's how Peter likes to work the screen tests on Hollyoaks anyway. It might be different for Emmerdale and Corrie and EastEnders and Casualty and all those other shows. But at least you'll know if you ever get a screen test on Hollyoaks. A little bit about how it works. Um, if you're in a screen test... Do you get a chance to rehearse with the actor or is the screen test like the first time you'll do the scene? It used to be historically, and I think it is on some shows that you literally come in, you do the scene and you go. I, again, looking at it with my actor head a few years ago was like, this is horrendous. Like, why would you do that to anyone? Um, so we have a period where I bring the actors in and do like a dummy. Uh, run of it so you get to know the space you get some direction from me you get to read it with the person that's actually going to run it with you I'll give you some notes to go away and think about you'll go and digest that in the canteen or wherever it is that you're waiting and then when we bring you back in you'll just be coming in for the once unless we feel the need to do it again but I feel like by that point you've run it you know who you're doing it with you've had direction it is a case of going back in and doing it again but there's a couple more people sat around the monitor for that time so, yeah, I, I like to think we found a way that's much kinder uh, to actors and getting an opportunity to do it first. Once again, I'll say it again how many times I've said it tonight, actonlist.tv if you want to get your membership and get access to the full session there with Peter. Um, I thought that was just interesting, just a little clip. A lot of people might be like, God, you know what? What's it like when you actually get a screen test? It's probably not as daunting as you think it is. Um, it's effectively by the time you get to that point, you'll be acting out scripts that you will have done probably in the original self-tape that then leads to an actual in-person audition, a recall, maybe a second recall. By the time you get to set to do that screen test, you're going to, uh, you know, you'll have nailed those lines a long time ago. Then you're going to get more rehearsal. You're going to get notes. You're going to get to go away, sit in the Hollywood's canteen, get back on set, do it one more time, and ultimately um, smash it out of the park and land the uh, land the job. And when you get down to a screen test, there really is, I don't know, protect, well, sometimes there's no one else up for the job. Like, the, like I said with Isabel Steele, there was nobody else there as far as I know. Um, you know, but occasionally, you know, you'll be up against, I don't know, one, two, three other people, you know. It's quite rare. Peter said, you know, it's quite rare to, to have four people test for a role. And he, just, he did that last week. But he's like, all of them brought something so different to the role that he just had to test each one of them. Um, but normally it would be less than that. You know, you're looking at maybe up, up against one or two other people. For a role that could potentially change your life, it's pretty probably a bit nerve-wracking by that point. But like I say, by that time, you will have done those scenes many, many, many times. Um, so you, uh, you know, you should be good to, uh, you should be good to go. Um, right. So that is the full session there. I've just been through those four clips with Peter. If you want to get access to it, that's on TV. Um, there it is there. It's in the members area there for you guys, along with just everything else. There's so much content here. If you're not where you want to be in your acting career this year, and you want to learn from literally the biggest names in the game, we are talking the biggest, you know, right up to the very, very, very top, you know, actors like Stephen Graham, um, you know, David Harewood, Matt Lucas, massive, massive names. Um, you know, agents, biggest agents in the industry. Casting directors is the biggest casting directors in the industry. Their entire teams. Um, you want to learn about, you know, creating your own content, making your own short films. God, I mean, you know, this film here that we had, uh, we had David Bradley, BAFTA winning actor David Bradley and the team behind a short film called Roy that has just been nominated for a BAFTA. Um, but get involved in this community this year. You were, are literally hurting your career if you do not get involved in this community. It's insane. So many actors are out there going, oh God, I really want to audition for this. I'm like, well, why don't you just come and talk to the casting director on one of these sessions? Like, are you mad? Um, so do come, and, uh, do come and get involved. We've got so much stuff coming up this year. And with that, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's going on on Thursday night. This is this Thursday night, 7.30 p.m., um, this is a really special session that I'm really, really, really looking forward to. I'm going to go back over to the site again. I'm just going to go back to the homepage uh, and go to the uh, live schedule. This is at actsonthis.tv forward slash live um, because we've got a session this Thursday night. So as I record this in two days, 21 hours and 56 minutes, an incredible session with an actor who is currently starring in ITV's The Bay as a character called Connor Townsend, and his name is David Carpenter. Now, what's really special about this is David, 18 months ago, joined Acts on This.TV 
with zero experience, no agent, no showreel, no headshots, no idea what a casting director is, literally no clue. But I saw him jumping on every single session that we did. That's on this. So every single week, he would jump on those sessions with the biggest casting directors, the agents, actors, writers, producers. And he'd jump on camera and he'd ask his question and have his little notebook there and he would write the answer down. You know, and one of his first questions was like, look, you know, what advice would you have for someone who's basically, you know, not going to be able to go to drama school? I don't think like David had the resources to go to drama school. And he's like, look, can I still enter the industry? Um, and over the last 18 months, obviously, he took away all this information, really nailed his casting type, figured out exactly where he fitted into the industry, shot show real material that showed that, acted on all the advice that we, we have in the community to get an agent, landed an agent, great agent, Alex Priestley um, in Manchester, started writing to casting directors, wrote to Kelly Valentine Hendry, got an opportunity off Kelly to self-tape, that went through her agent, Alex, obviously, um, ended up basically auditioning, getting a recall, um, and ended up in the Bay. Since then, he was doing theatre over Christmas. I'm pretty certain the Bay is going again, I read, so he will no doubt be doing season four of that as well. Um, so he's pretty much going to be booked up until the end of 2022. And this is a guy who 18 months ago literally knew nothing. So what we're going to do on Thursday night is I'm going to bring David on, and we are going to so transparently go through every single step of David's journey, literally, and I, it, there'll be some stuff we can't show, I'm going to speak to his agent and see exactly what, you know, Alex is comfortable with us showing. But I will hopefully be showing you guys, um, you know, the we'll definitely be showing you the, the showroom material that David shot, the emails that he sent to Alex to land the meeting with Alex, you know, to get representation. We're going to be showing, I mean, I'd love to show his self-tape for the Bay if we're going to be allowed. I'm hoping that's going to be possible because I think the self-tape, the scene in the self-tape should have aired already. So that should be okay. I'm going to show you the email that he sent to Kelly the response that he got from that. I mean, ultimately, we're going to try and be as transparent as possible and show you literally every single thing he did, down to what he wrote, when he wrote it, when he sent it, the replies he got back, how he built this career so quickly. And that's why I think it's going to resonate so well with people in the community because there'll be so many people in ActsOnThis.tv in the community who... Um, are in that position where they're looking for the first role and there's no reason it can't be a lead like David got in the Bay. Most people will start off with a, a day player role, um, but you know, lightning can strike and if you're in the right place at the right time and you're doing the right stuff, um, you can't guarantee it, but you could equally be in the same position that David's in now and your first role can be a big role on a multiple actors that's happened for. Um, and it's just going to be like, yeah, just a, a really, really open session. We're going to do as much Q&A as we can, so we're going to bring actors on. You can have a chat with David. Um, but I just think, yeah, it's going to be hugely impactful. And what I'm, what will be really interesting is because David is, you know, he's, he's new to the industry, but he's, he's starring in the show right now. Um, still not that many people will know who David Carpenter is. So it'll be interesting to see how many people tune in for this session because I think people just hear a big name of a casting director and go, oh, I'm going to tune in for that one. And yeah, that's going to be useful. Of course it is. But you're not going to get the information you're going to get on this one on one of those sessions with the casting director. So you're going to get actionable, like step-by-step -step guidance on this session. of You're going to see what David sent that landed in the results that you probably want. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how many people are dedicated and go, ah, I can see the value in that as opposed to the people who are probably, you know, blinded by a big name and will only give that their time. So it'll be an interesting one to see uh, to see what happens. But that's going to be this Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. I've got a little trailer um, so you can see David now. And um, here's a little just a, again, just a little insight on what we're going to be uh, we're going to be covering um, 7.30 p.m. this Thursday. Actors, would you like to land a lead role in a flagship TV show over the next few months? Would you like a blueprint on how to make that happen from an actor who has achieved just that? If the answer is yes, I want to invite you to join us for our next Act On This TV live mastermind session taking place on Thursday, the 3rd of February at 7.30 p.m. with this legend here currently starring in ITV's The Bay as Connor Townsend. It's David Carpenter. David, massive congrats on all of your success, mate. What are we going to be covering on Thursday night? So we are going to cover everything. I'm going to tell you what I was doing when I joined this community, how I balanced out life and acting, how I got my first um, agent, which is amazing. Yep. Um, what I learned, how I got in contact with people, and most importantly, how I got this first massive 
regular TV um, TV part. There we go. In the, in the bay. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, David joined this community 18 months ago, really had no idea what he was doing, but was one of the most hardest working members I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to walk you through an exact blueprint of everything that David did in order to land this regular role in the Bay. And also he's doing lots of other stuff now outside of that as well um, in TV and theatre. Um, we're going to walk you through like everything from like figuring out casting types, showreels, getting his agent, um, working with his agent to land auditions, sending stuff out to casting directors. We're going to show you emails that David sent, responses that he got, ultimately suffocating your excuses. After this, if you do not know how to get your first TV role, I don't know what I don't know what else we can do for people, basically, David. If you want to be there, <laughs> get yourself over right now to actonthis.tv forward slash live for full details of this session and all future sessions as well. We do it every single week with the biggest actors, agents, casting directors, writers, directors, and producers in TV. And David, we're short on time. Five seconds on why actors don't want to miss this one in particular. Because I have the biggest secrets ever to get your first TV role. <laughs> nice. If you want those secrets, be there. Actonthis.tv forward slash live. I love it. I love the way he's like, yeah, because I've got the biggest secrets ever to get your TV role. So we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be covering everything. It's just going to be like I say, the most transparent session. I think we probably one of the most transparent sessions we've ever we've ever done. Um, I've just got to, I've just got to find out of his agent exactly what we can show. But I know we can definitely show the emails he sent to Landy's agent, the emails he's been sending out to casting directors, the showreel footage that he shot. I'm just really hoping we can show his self tape. I mean, so many people like you know DVD extras of big shows. You always get like the the auditions, don't you? I don't think anybody's going to mind, but I've just got to clear it with uh, with Alex. But I think it should be okay. Um, and it's just going to be a really cool session. But David, loads of people in the chat are saying he's such a lovely guy. Obviously, a lot of you guys know him from the community. Um, he really is a uh, an awesome, just a super hardworking and super grateful, positive person. I think there's so much to be said in life. And you know, I always bang on about it, about, you know, leaving people better than you found them. Like, you can't have a chat with David and not feel better basically, because he's, he just charges people up. So um, it's just going to be a really, really positive, super inspiring, motivational chat, I think. Uh, Kate says, I really want to watch this, but I'm going to watch the replay. I'm working sound and lighting for a local panto. Oh, nice one, Kate. Um, well, enjoy it. And that's a great thing when you remember the community, you get access to the replay the very next day. So um, you don't need to worry about stressing, you know, to, to be there um, on, uh, on each of the sessions live. So uh, you can always get the recording. Um, the following afternoon, basically, I get it up online as soon as I can. Evie said, Dave is the loveliest guy too. Um, he really is. And Sarah said, to be honest, I, I literally started like him. So he's such an inspiration for me at the moment. No, honestly, I think you'll all really relate to him um, because it's just, you know, it's just, well, we're all in that position, aren't we? Myself included, like, you know, we're all just hustling. We're still hustling <laughs> for the next role, you know? And you never know where it's coming from, but you just got to keep, you know, you got to just keep in there, keep working, keep acting on this information um, put yourself out there being of use being a solution to a casting problem um, and just you know what just being freaking grateful and positive like being a good person is like just start helping someone said to me once it changed my life he said listen you're going to get everything you want out of your life by helping everybody else get what they want out of theirs I'm like it's just the best piece of advice I was ever given because it's so freaking true help other people get what they want out of their life and inevitably you're going to get what you want out of yours 100 percent um right we've got uh we've probably got 15 minutes to do a little bit of q a on absolutely anything you want to talk about now so um fire away but if you're here live put them in the chat if you're watching on the replay or you're listening on the acts on this tv audio experience on spotify or apple podcasts or anywhere else soundcloud wherever you're listening um and you want to get in, involved in some q a obviously come and come and you know get a membership to acts on this.tv you can do that on a weekly basis with our guests um come and get involved in these monday night chats on facebook.com forward slash acts on this tv or just tweet me at acts on this tv whenever you want and i'll always do my best or pet choose the community manager for acts on this um you know one of us will try and get back to you as soon as we uh, as soon as we can to give you uh, any help that you you might need um so fire away, get your uh, get your questions here. Um, Sally Ann says, Ross, I was trying to work out if Peter Hunt was saying it was good to contact him on a Friday. Yeah, so yeah, I I know it was it was a little unclear about how he said it. So no, what he was saying is, listen, on a Friday, um, you know, he will be sort of you know winding down a little bit, 
um, and might have a little bit more time to look at stuff as opposed to first thing Monday morning where he's setting up for the week and he's like, right, let's go. I've always found Friday afternoons before one, like, again, this was a little hack that I always used to use and it's always done well for me. In anything to do with creative industries, this is just from what I've experienced. I'm not saying it happens in every office without, you know, by any means, but agents who I've known in the past or have been with and creative agencies or if I've been doing voiceover in some, you know, like, you know, big uh, production kind of facility and stuff like that. Generally on a Friday, one, everyone's in a great mood. Two, they're finishing a little bit earlier, not necessarily like early, early, but rather than 6 p.m. They might finish at 4.30 or something like that. So they're in a good mood about that. Um, and they all... <laughs> There's quite a lot of offices that like to just crack out a Prosecco on a Friday lunchtime. Like, oh, it's Friday. We're winding down. I just find people are like in a really good mood on a Friday. Um, and when I've had an ask, a cheeky ask, like, and I've been like, oh, God, I wonder if they'll do that. If I've sent an email on a Friday morning, pre one o'clock, though, um, I've generally got a better response. If you're hitting someone up first thing on a Monday morning and they're a bit stressed or a Tuesday morning and they're, and they're already behind in the week, um, I find people will just bury it and go, oh, I can't deal with that yet. Um, but it has worked well. I'm not saying it's going to work every time, but getting somebody and asking for something after they've had a glass of Prosecco, always a good one, sally It just depends whether they, you know, doesn't happen in every office, I'm, I'm guessing, but I've seen it happen in a fair few offices in our industry. Um, Sarah says, just wanted to confirm if you're doing a show real surgery soon. Yeah, we are. We're doing it on, uh, I'll tell you, Sarah, I've got the date already. Uh, so we do this every quarter for members of Acts on this TV. 17th of February, two weeks t- uh, on, what is it? Th- two weeks on Thursday, uh, we're doing it. There is a session, so I've got I've got David's session here and then Sherry Surgery on the 17th. There is a session on the 8th, but we've not confirmed the guest yet because the guest that I had lined up has had to change. So we will be doing a session on the 8th of February. Um, I just don't know what it is. And also, I think what we're going to do, just to give you guys a heads up, the session after this one, uh, the show real surgery. Uh, let me know if you want to do this because I want to try this out. But this comes down to everything being live. You know, we do everything live on a Tuesday or a Thursday night, and other people are like, I can't make every session and that. And we obviously we do the recordings and that sort of stuff, which is fine. But what I was thinking for members, I want to sometimes I want to go a little bit deeper into someone's career or life, or I don't know, just get a bit more out of the guests. And I feel I can do that in a podcast, like an in depth chat that I just have with them. You know, I do these podcasts in my kitchen. I invite people around to my, you know, literally to my house. We have a coffee. And some of these podcasts will be two hours, two and a half hours. And I know that's a lot, but to listen to across a week, it's not that much. Um, I want to give you guys one pre-recorded feature a month. So you'll get three live sessions. Turn up if you want, or you'll just get the recording if you can't. But then on some, I just, I love doing the podcasts. And I'm like, I feel I can get a little bit more out of people when we're not restricted to just a 90 minute Zoom session. Um, so, on the 22nd of this month, on, on the 22nd of February, sorry, I'm going to try, I'm going to test this out. Um, I'm going to drop a pre-recorded podcast for you guys. So it'll still come out on the day your live broadcast was going to happen, um, but you can take it in in your own time and it'll just go a little bit deeper. Um, one guy I really want to get round, if you've been watching The Responder starring Martin Freeman, a brand new uh, like cop thriller, fantastic show. If not, you want to watch it. Um, the guy who wrote that was a guy called Tony Schumacher. Um, and this is the first thing that he's wrote. And he was an ex-copper. I'm sure it's going to be based on his experience of being in the police, um, like the underground sort of crime scene in Liverpool. That's where it's set. Um, and he's a top bloke. He's so nice. I did all the read-throughs for the responder. And I just think he's going to have had a fascinating life. And he's an ex-copper turned top TV writer. This is the first thing he's had commissioned, though, the first thing he's written. Um, and I just think that story would be fascinating for anyone in the community who wants to write their own thing and feels that because they've never been a writer in their past, that they'd never have a chance of having a top TV show commissioned. And I'm like, yes, if your story is good enough, of course you have the chance. And I think Tony would be a really interesting chat. But to try and get all of that into a Zoom session and do Q&A and all this sort of stuff, I don't know if that's going to be possible. So that would be a session I would rather record as a really in-depth podcast over a brew and give it to you guys to just listen to in your own time. And we would probably get more value out of Tony by doing it that way. But let me know what you think. That's just That was just something that I think would be good. But that's just my own opinion. Um, but let us know if you think that would be a, uh, you know, a, good, way to, uh, a good way to do it. Um, but we're probably going to do that this, uh, this coming month in February just to test it out. Um, let's see what's going on. Sharon's saying happy birthday to Petch. Yeah, it's Petch's birthday today, which is, uh, which is cool. Um, 
I'm sure he's had a good day. I messaged him before. David says, Ross, I think uh, I was on with David when the two Davids were being interviewed by Jason Mazza. Yeah, you were with David Carpenter. Yeah, you were. You were. David Bell, yes, you were. I, uh, I remember that, mate. Sorry says, I'm planning out emails for the casting directors. Um, I do know my casting site, but don't know how to word it. Love not having English as my first language. That's cool, Sarah. We can help you with that. So does this make sense? She says, kind, quirky, nice, best friend, good morals, hero type. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, hero type and then nice, best friend. Hero type would generally be kind of, well, not always. It's the lead, really. So here, although you could still be a nice, best friend and come to the rescue of the lead protagonist who might have been in trouble um it's a trick yeah it's a tricky one hero and the nice best friend are, are probably just a little it's kind of one or the other sometimes i think N nice best friend are definitely getting quirky and kind definitely are in the same casting bracket good morals so you'd be the one who like the friend who's the lead who would be the hero of the piece um in terms of like just the lead role he's probably the one who gets into trouble trying to do something you would be the kind best friend who actually saves him so technically you saved the hero. So I guess you are the, you're the hero as well. I get it, Sarah. But yeah, we can help you with that. I mean, casting type really, you know, comes down to when you're first starting out, your age, your gender, your ethnicity, and the jobs that it looks like you can do in the world. Because we all just make judgments on people. Whether people say, oh, you shouldn't judge. We don't do it on like you know, nastily. But when you see somebody, the way they walk, they talk, they dress, you instantly infer things about them like, oh, they must be a solicitor or, oh, she's posh or, you know, he isn't or whatever. Um, you do make these sort of stereotypical passes on people, which, you know, aren't always great, but like, you know, in TV are often the thing that is used. You know, if you need somebody who's going to be two, two lines as a GP, you know, you know the type of people who could come across as a GP. You also know the type of people who could come, you know, the GP is not going to be cast as the guy who's got two lines as the mugger with the knife in the alleyway. Um, so, when you're looking at your headshot, have a look and go, what jobs does it look like I could do? Am I the nurse? You, you probably are, sorry, if you're saying kind, you know, and, you know, you might be the, quir you know, slightly quirky nurse, the one who makes the patients laugh. Um, equally, you could, be, you could be the receptionist, the waitress, um, you know, those kind of roles when you're, you're first starting out. But we can help you. Anyone who's, Eng English isn't the first language, we can help you with that. Um, and I'm sure your English is brilliant. I know it is, Sarah, anyway, and it's far better than my... I don't know, you speak six languages, don't you? Like French, Spanish, German, all these different languages. So um, so that's amazing. And what a gift that is for any actor. Indra says, have you read my email? Indra, I don't reckon, I don't know if I've got an email from you. Where did you send it to, mate? Uh, let me know. It should always go to ross at actsonthis.tv or help at actsonthis.tv. If you ever reply to any of my emails, they don't all, as in like the, the bulk emails that get sent out from the email server, they don't always, the replies that always come through to me. So um, if you reply to one of those, just copy it into a new email, mate, and send it me. Um, Archie, look at this. He says, totally agree. We use Fridays to catch up and go through less urgent things. Boom. Archie, do you crack the Prosecco open on a Friday night, a Friday afternoon? Um, I know a lot of offices that do. They get some, some Uber Eats in and they crack open a bit of Prosecco. Why not? Uh, but there you go. You just heard it from an agent there. That that's also a good time to uh, a good time to write. Um, it looks like everybody loves the podcast. Evie's obsessed with the responder. Um, Jane says brilliant, great idea. Says Sarah, loving the responder. Everyone loves the responder. Um, and yeah, Evie, yeah, it's, it's it's Tony's first thing. Like he's so good, um, and he's definitely up for a podcast. I I, did, I was talking to him on Twitter. I did all the read throughs for the the responder. What a show that is. Um, did you see Lord Sugar knocking Martin Freeman's Scouse accent? I thought it was superb. Like, I don't know what Sugar's on about. Um, when I jumped on Zoom, I've not seen Martin Freeman for, for quite a while. I was, you know, I've been watching his stuff for years. Like, I loved the, you know, from like the days of The Office and stuff. Obviously, you know, he's a bit older now, looks a bit different. And when I jumped on Zoom, it was a bit of a double take. I was like, that looks like Martin Freeman, but he's talking Scouse and he's, yeah, that can't be him. Maybe that's just someone who looks like him. And what it was is he didn't drop the accent at all. Like as soon as we all jumped on and at the beginning when we're just waiting for people to join the sesh, he spoke in his Scouse accent the whole time. Literally, you never, he never dropped it, not once. And um, I thought it was flawless. I was like, wow, what, you know, what a freaking job he's done of the accent. Um, I think, yeah, he's one, I think he's one of the best actors in the country. Top, top bloke. Um, Sharon says, what a dick Lord Sugar is. I mean, I quite like Lord Sugar sometimes, but I'm like, mate, come on. Like, you can't, you know, you can't complain about that. It was a quality, quality piece of acting. Um, definitely. Um, 
Oh, there you go. So I just had not even read your comments, Sharon, but you said you, that you read that Martin spoke spoke in Scouse in Scouse accent for twelve months to nail the accent. Yeah, he didn't drop it once on Zoom. On that, literally, not what not once the whole uh, the whole thing, um, and was just great. And what a show! If you've not seen it all, freaking hell! Some of the twists in that, my jaw was on the floor. What and what an incredible piece of writing! Um, <laughs> right, couple of minutes left. We'll do a little bit, a um, little bit more Q and A. If you've got any uh, any questions you want answering, Brendan says if you can do a few in the room workshops with casting directors or directors, do them. I've just been offered two jobs because of these workshops. There you go. Good, uh, <coughs> good work, Brendan. You're always hustling as well, though, mate. You put the work in, which is always good. Uh, always good to see. Uh, Brendan says I was asked to tape for a new TV series. Oh, that's your question from before, uh, uh, Marek. Sorry. Um, so you were asked to tape for a new series. You sent the tape off. Casting has told your agent uh, ultimately that you've got the role and confirmed and confirmed. So that is that confirmed? Then you put that. Put me forward to production company for the role. This was three weeks ago. Filming not starting until the end of February. No casting details have been confirmed on the website. Should I get my agents to reach out? Yeah, definitely. If you're not in anything three weeks, mate, because ultimately, you know, you could be, if that's like a, an availability thing and they've got to keep you open for that, you know, your agent's not going to be putting you forward for stuff that's going to clash. And then if this doesn't come off, effectively, you could miss out on something else that you could have auditioned for. So, yeah, I would chase that off. If you've not heard anything in three weeks, that's quite a long time. I just say, just check in on this, what the status is. You know, have you signed any contracts yet or anything like that? Um, I mean, if you sign a contract, then it's happening, isn't it? And you'll get paid even if even if you don't do the job. You'll still get your uh, your production days and your engagement fee. You won't get any usage on it, but you'll get everything else even if you don't shoot it. Um, so, yeah, just I would definitely chase it up, Marek, yeah. I couldn't wait three weeks and not know what was going on, definitely. Sharon's got the last two eps of the responder to watch tonight. Sharon, watch it. It's freaking... It's just... I I just so hope he does another one. Don't know what the story would be on that one, but like, just it's just explosive. Um, Very, very good. Um, right, time for a couple more questions and then we will wrap it up and hopefully I'll see everybody on, uh, on Thursday night with David Carpenter. But anyone got anything else they want to discuss? Anything else going on? Or just anything you want to promote? Anyone want to just plug some If you've got something that you want to uh you know promote or you want me to retweet or you want uh people to come and see or i don't know something on amazon prime we should watch or netflix or a part coming out um on tv that you want us to watch then uh do let us know sharon says she didn't hear anything back from waterley road it's a shame that sharon because you were freaking spot on for that role i saw that casting brief go out and i'm like if there's one person i know who's spot on for that it's you but I don't know. God knows. I mean, you know what, though? Never say never as well. I think the most I ever waited from audition to job, it's quite a while, you know. I think once was like four weeks or something like that. And and my agent presumed I hadn't got it and was speaking to the casting director about another another actor. And she just said in passing, oh, you know, so, you know, obviously that other thing didn't go Ross's way. Uh, and the casting director went, oh, God, no, it has. <laughs> but, like, everything just got pushed back and we're just waiting for people to, I think some exec producers had had to go and do a recce in a foreign country, so weren't going to be back for two weeks or something like that. So you never know sometimes, you know, stuff can just happen. Um, or, you know, even sometimes I've had it where people have been given a job and then they've not been able to do it, and then the person who was next favourite ends up getting a call going, oh, do you want to do this job? <laughs> so you never bloody no, Sharon, it could uh, it could happen. But I'm sure you did a good job of the tape or whatever, and um, Michelle Smith will keep an eye out for you, you know. I'm sure that'll uh, that'll happen. She's uh, a good casting director, got a good memory. If you did a good job, I'm sure she'll bring you in for something else. Um, but as you say there, yeah, the fact they contacted you for a self-tape is brilliant. It is, definitely. Uh, we should do Zoom auditions training, says David. I mean, we talk about Zoom auditions all the time on the sessions. Um, if you've not watched the uh, the session we did, David, with uh, Carleen Crawford, uh, which is, I'll show you, I'll go into the members area. We actually spoke quite a lot about Zoom auditions and Zoom recalls on this one. I remember specifically because Carleen was saying a lot of actors try and cheat and they'll put the script behind their laptop and like try and not learn the lines because they think, oh, it's on Zoom, nobody can see me. Um, and she's like, we can see, we can see your eyes moving, you know, do the freaking work. Um, but we speak quite a lot about, yeah, you know, getting Zoom auditions right. There it is. And it's called We're Not the Enemy with TV, uh, top TV casting director, Carleen Crawford, CDG. Um, 
Colleen's cast massive, massive shows. Um, Channel 4's Screw that just has just been on. She cast that. His Dark Materials, I Hate Susie. Um, upcoming dramas, The North Water. And you might have seen the trailer for SAS Rogue Heroes, uh, which are brand new BBC dramas. Um, she's done those as well. But she's just so nice. Bloody lovely. Um, and we talked quite a lot about Zoom uh, recalls in that in that chat there, David. So definitely check that out if you weren't on that one live, mate. That's a, yeah, that's a cracker. Um, right. I don't think there's any more questions coming through. Um it's 58 minutes past yeah 59 minutes past now so i will uh i will call this a uh call this a day but thank you so much it always means the world that you join me on a monday night because it's quite late it's 10 o'clock you could be watching netflix and whatever else you're watching or just in bed um so i always appreciate you uh you coming and hanging out with me if you're watching on the replay come and hang out live with us on every any monday night monday nights 9 p.m till 10 p.m facebook.com forward slash act on this tv Get over to the website, actonthis.tv. Join this freaking community. Come and get involved in the Zoom sessions we do every single week with the biggest names in the industry. If you want actionable advice that you can literally take away and do something with the very next day to further your career, you would just be crazy. If you do not truly understand the business of this business, um, you'll be crazy not to get involved in this community and get a membership because I believe you need three things to succeed. You need talent, obviously. Um, You need business acumen. And you need patience. And if you have two of any of those, but not the third, you will lose. You can be the most talented actor, and you can have business acumen, but no patience. So you'll you'll you know drop out. So you might not stay in the game long enough. You can have patience and talent, but no business acumen. So you're going to have no idea how to get yourself in front of anybody. So you're going to lose. What other combinations of those could you have? You could have business acumen and and patience, but unfortunately no talent. So that's going to be a problem. You're going to still need to hone your craft, otherwise you're never going to work. Um, but yeah, you need all three. You can't just go, oh, I'm great, I'm going to be discovered. You're never going to be discovered. you know. Or, you know, oh, I've got all the time in the world and I'm patient. You're never going to be discovered. Like You need to understand the business side of this industry. So if that's what you are lacking or that's what you want to learn about, that's on this.tv, come and join us. We'd love to have you in the community. Um, everyone's saying thanks, but thank you guys. Really do, a, uh, do appreciate your time um, being here. Kerry says, starting the week with positivity boost. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's what it's all about. And that's the other thing about this community. Zero effing tolerance for negativity. We will not stand whinging. We don't really stand for dabbling. Like, we, we, we have committed actors who take massive action to get what they want and motivate other actors along the way and collaborate. And, like, you know, if you want to just basically be charged up by the most supportive, positive people in the industry full stop come and get involved um i would love to love to have you in the community you know and uh, and help you make moves in this uh this new 2022 era and um, so thank you what i'll do i'll play this little trailer out again for david um if you've missed it if you've just joined now this is taking place 7 30 p.m this thursday night if you literally want a blueprint of how you can go from zero to hero and get a tv job that's going to change your life in the next 18 months this has got to be a session that you get involved in at sonthis.tv forward slash live. Check out the full schedule and I will, um, I'll see you guys Thursday night. Really hope to uh, see you there. If you can't make it, the recording will be up in your members area on Friday. So lots of love to you all. Go and crush it this week. Make the rest of your life the best of your life. Until next time, bye for now. Actors, would you like to land a lead role in a flagship TV show over the next few months? Would you like a blueprint on how to make that happen from an actor who has achieved just that? If the answer is yes, I want to invite you to join us for our next Act On This.TV live mastermind session taking place on Thursday, the 3rd of February at 7.30 p.m. with this legend here currently starring in ITV's The Bay as Connor Townsend. It's David Carpenter. David, massive congrats on all of your success, mate. What are we going to be covering on Thursday night? So we are going to cover everything. I'm going to tell you what I was doing when I joined this community, how I balanced out life and acting, how I got my first um, agent, which is amazing. Yep. Um, what I learned, how I got in contact with people, and most importantly, how I got this first massive regular TV um, TV part. There we go, in, this, in the bay. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, David joined this community 18 months ago, really had no idea what he was doing, but was one of the most hardest working members I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to walk you through an exact blueprint of everything that David did in order to land this regular role in the Bay. And also he's doing lots of other stuff now outside of that as well um, in TV and theatre. 
Um, we're going to walk you through like everything from like figuring out casting types, show reels, getting his agent, um, working with his agent to land auditions, sending stuff out to casting directors. We're going to show you emails that David sent, responses that he got, ultimately suffocating your excuses. After this, if you do not know how to get your first TV role, I don't know what I don't know what else we can do for people, basically, David. If you want to be there, <laughs> get yourself over right now to actonlist.tv forward slash live for full details of this session and all future sessions as well. We do it every single week with the biggest actors, agents, casting directors, writers, directors, and producers in TV. And David, we're short on time. Five seconds on why actors don't want to miss this one in particular. Because I have the biggest secrets ever to get your first TV role. <laughs> nice. If you want those secrets, be there. Actonlist.tv forward slash live. <laughs>